I'm tired, y'all. I am simply tired. And listen, I'm going to give some analysis of Texas Tech losing 38-21 to Kansas State in this game. But I'll be honest with you. This feels like a therapy rant session for me in terms of what I had to endure and probably you had to endure in terms of your thoughts when it came to what happened to the Texas Tech offense in the second half against the Kansas State Wildcats. Just a putrid and just disgusting performance overall. And here's the thing. I'm not blaming the players on this one at all. Before we get into it, give me your one word to describe that Texas Tech loss to Kansas State in a game that was very winnable. Very winnable. We'll lay it out in terms of what was going on in terms of the injuries to Baron Morton, but the situation that was at hand for the Red Raiders in this one in a game where offensively they laid an absolute egg in a situation where they had the chance to go win a football game, even with a true freshman quarterback in replacing Baron Morton. So again, give me your one word to describe this Texas Tech loss to Kansas State down in the comments below. All right, let's jump into this because th this is one of those games where very much divided it felt like in terms of some of the people on Texas Tech Twitter, Facebook, wherever you interact during the game, it felt like it was divided a little bit. Um, and then it really wasn't, except for maybe like one or two people that thought, oh, you don't know anything about football, right? And in that case, strongly disagree with them, and they're just trying to rep for their bro on this one. But anyway, let's lay the lay of the land on this, okay? Baron Morton did not play in the second half, according to Joey McGuire, due to a shoulder injury. Remember, coming into this game, he sustained an injury during the West Virginia game a few weeks back to his AC joint in his right shoulder. Now, Baron Morton just didn't have zip on the ball and good for Joey McGuire for taking him out and protecting a player. I am all wholeheartedly about that. Protect the player in moments where they need protecting and good for Joey McGuire and crew to really take him out of this game in a situation where you could tell Baron just didn't have it in terms of the zip, right? And that's not his fault. Injuries are injuries, right? There's going to be issues with that, right? So you take him out and now you have a true freshman quarterback and Jake Strong in the mix, right? Let's lay the lay of the land in terms of what happened for Texas Tech in terms of Jake Strong at the starting quarterback position for the Red Raiders in the second half against Kansas State. You had two freshman quarterbacks playing in this one, right? Because Avery Johnson probably just replaced Will Howard. At least he did it in that game because you could not stop the run at all if you were the Red Raiders. I mean, you and I could have ran through some of the holes that Kansas State produced against this Texas Tech defensive front. It, you could fit a Mack truck through some of these things. It was unbelievable how bad they were at setting the edge. And even Joey McGuire mentioned it in his post-game press conference. But that doesn't matter right now. This is more about the offensive side of the ball. Here we go. Texas Tech was up 21-17 with 7.31 remaining in the third quarter, right? They ran the ball only six times after getting the lead against Kansas State after this. Six times. How the hell is that possible? right? Not to mention, I want to point this out. Everything that I am saying right now, I am not throwing shade at Jake Strong. He, I thought he did a phenomenal job considering the circumstances and what he was asked to do, right? He had some zip on the ball. He made some really tight window throws. And then in true freshman quarterback fashion, he made some mistakes because again, he's a true freshman quarterback, right? But the offensive play calling did him absolutely zero. And I mean, zero favors. When it comes down to it, zero. Zach Kitley did not help him at all when it came down to it. So again, give me your one word to describe how you feel about Texas Tech losing to Kansas State. I just told you they were up 21-17 midway through the third quarter. You had Jake Strong have a fake pitch out to the running back, right? And run for 56 yards, set up a TD to take the lead for the Red Raiders, right? Why don't you take the air out of the ball? No, you don't do that. You don't do that if you're Zach Kitley. I'll tell you what he did in the second half here in just a second. But let me do. Let me hear your one word to describe Texas Tech and this loss to Kansas State. I am just, oh, I got to go off here. I have to go off. This is just inexcusable in terms of what he did with a true freshman quarterback out there. All right, let's start with this. 28 throws to only eight carries. That's what Texas Tech did in terms of splits with pass attempts and rushing attempts in the second half with a true freshman quarterback out there. And no, I know what you're saying. I see the game got out of hand. He had to throw the football. Bullshit. 
It was 24-21, and the first time you come out there, what do you do? You have a pass play, and he throws a pick because he's a true freshman quarterback backed up in his own end. What are you doing? Why is Taj Brooks not being used? Why? Eight carries? Eight carries for Taj Brooks. And listen, there's going to be some people out there that say, oh, RC, the box was stacked. Why aren't you giving the – Why are you have to throw the football. You have to throw the football against the stacked box. Go look at some of the plays. They fake stack the block, the box and drop these guys back into coverage. What are you doing? You at least have to make Kansas State respect the run and that you simply didn't do that. Take the air out of the football and give your elite playmaker, one of the best playmakers in the Big 12, let alone the Big 12, the country. In Taz Brooks, he came into this game fifth, not in the Big 12 in rushing, fifth in the country. He averaged 6.1 yards a carry. And then I know what you're going to say. RC, again, the stack boxes, they're going to have a chance to just stop it, and then Jake's going to have to throw the football. Well, damn it, at least you made him respect it. And now you potentially just have a hat on a hat, man on man, and then you're trying to really put your quarterback in a better situation because, hey, you got a guy like Jerron Bradley. He showed what he could do in this game in terms of one-on-one -on -one coverage, right? And then he also showed you, well, not even his fault, it was Kitley's fault in the sense of you throw a fade to Jerron Bradley with help over the top with a safety? What are you doing? Give Tosh Brooks and Cameron Valdez the ball. This isn't complicated, right? There was no creativity whatsoever in terms of trying to get your elite playmaker in Tosh Brooks the football in this game. Zero, specifically in the second half. Zero. Listen. It is absolutely dumbfounding to me that this happened. Taz Brooks averaged 5.6 yards a carry and didn't have a rush less than three yards in the second half. And you're going to tell me that the stacked boxes was the issue? No. Taz Brooks was fine. Give him the damn football. You lost this game because you tried to get too damn cute offensively with a true freshman quarterback. Simple and plain. That's what happened here. Right? Why the hell are you throwing the football 28 times with a true freshman quarterback? Why are you doing that? When you have a guy in Taz Brooks, right, who is one of the, if not the best running back in the Big 12, and it's not even a Taz Brooks thing, use Cameron Valdez too, right? Your offensive line has proven time and time again this year that they can win at the point of the attack in the run game. Why are you not running the football more to ease the pressure off of this true freshman quarterback? Why? He threw more times than Baron Morton did in the first half. What are we doing here? And again, I understand, oh, it was the back half of the game. They had to throw. No, there was a situation where the game was within reach. Again, it was 21-17. Then Kansas State goes down to score. It's 24-21. That's still within reach, right? What does Texas Tech do on the next 16 plays? They throw three picks. They only ran the ball three times during that. Taj Brooks got three touches. What are you doing? What are you doing? There's no way to go around where the blame should be pointed in this one. And I want to say this too. Does Texas Tech win the game if you give Taj Brooks 20 plus touches? Hell if I know. I'm not I'm going to predict the future, but I can tell you this. It feel a lot better about your chances if you do, damn it. Right? You have a true freshman quarterback throwing the ball 28 times, and Taj Brooks only touches the ball eight times in the second half. What on God's green earth are you thinking? What are you thinking? Again, I'm not saying give Taj Brooks the ball every damn time, right? I'm not. I'm not saying that. But I am saying get your elite playmaker, the centerpiece of your offense, more involved, and take the pressure and the weight off of this true freshman quarterback's shoulders in a game that you were in. You were in, damn it. You had the lead with him. He led you down the field and got you the lead. Take the air out of the ball and give the ball to your best playmaker and force Kansas State to prove to you that they can stop the run, damn it, with stack boxes or not. Again, Taj Brooks averaged 5.6 yards a carry, and you're telling me, that, oh, it was stacked boxes. How do you know he's going to fall forward? Again, he averaged at worst he got three yards on every carry, right? He didn't have a carry in the second half with under three yards. He averaged 5.6 yards a carry in the second half. His longest run was 14 yards, right? Like, what are you doing here? It makes no sense whatsoever. Texas Tech 
had every chance to win this football game. Every damn chance to win it, right? And simple and plain, the coaching staff literally threw this game away. It's that simple, in my opinion. It is that simple. All right, let me ask you this. Do you agree or disagree with my rant? That was a 10-minute rant. Hopefully it shows you maybe how you feel too. I don't know. Maybe you disagree with me. Let me know. Again, did the defense for Texas Tech do them any favors in the run game? Absolutely not. But you were in this game and you just threw it away. If you're the Texas Tech coaching staff, literally, you threw it away. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me in my rant down in the comments. And one more time, one word to describe Texas Tech, losing to Kansas State. A very winnable game, in my opinion, regardless of who the quarterback was for Texas Tech. Yet you throw the ball again 28 times. And Taj Brooks only touches at eight in the second half. Inexcusable. Inexcusable. All right, I am RC Maxfield reminding you, if you want the latest breaking news, rumors, game breakdowns, previews, whatever it may be, if it's Texas Tech football, we've got you covered here on the most engaging Texas Tech community on YouTube. Of course, I'm talking about the Back to 12 podcast channel.